Good day, lords and ladies, and welcome to Wild Myth, a game developed and published by Wild Walker Games. Um, first off, I really love this game. Um, I'm a big fan of D&D, I've played a lot of RPG games over the years, Neverwinter Nights, uh, a lot of the Elder Scrolls franchise, um, a lot of Bethesda's older stuff like Dragon Age and Knights of the Old Republic, um, Pillars of Eternity, all all that jazz, and I played a lot of D&D, both 3rd edition and 5th um, edition. And I'm going to say this now, Wild Myth is the closest that I've come to a single player D&D experience in a computer game in a very long time. I mean, an extremely long time. Um, for all expensive purposes, it is basically a D&D campaign. Um, there are multiple ways you can run it. Um, you can have an open ended story, you can have like basically like a, an open world sandbox. You can have a linear story, which is developed by the developers. Um, you can even make your own um, story, if you so wish. Um, because the developers have been very, very generous and included in tools, for example, about how to, to import your own characters, your own cut screens. You can make your own cut, sc cut screens, which have done a very um, lovely like comic style. Um, it's literally a very open massively open world get uh, open world open context um, content game I should say content game where you get as much out of it as you put in um, it's still in um, beta stage as you can see here um, and but I'm not gonna lie to you this game is massively polished for a beta release for an early access release it's it's better than a lot of games out there at the moment um, there's a lot of context, for example, characters, like, your impacts carry so much weight in this game. Um, characters, if they die, they lose limbs, or if they get knocked out of combat, they lose limbs. Events can happen to them, as you can see here, for example, people can grow wings, get, like, spectral limbs. You can craft and discover equipment. Your characters leave an imprint upon the world. They have, like, a legacy, for example, here. Sorry, took a moment to get here. Um, as you can see, like these are some of my past adventurers, uh, and they all have a story to tell. Think they have developed, they have equipment, they have stats, um, they have abilities, um, and once their adventure is done, once their adventure is done, like even if you are successful, not successful. Um, they will go into the legacy of the world, the history of the world, and you can recruit them later on down the line. Uh, it is a fantastic game. They age. Um, your impacts in the campaign mean your characters will age. Because um, it, it's not like a short-term campaign. It's broken up into chapters, and like several years can pass. For example, here, Harper Mill, who was one of my, um, one of my characters from one of my later campaigns, um, you see, he was 71 by the end of the campaign because a lot of time had passed between the beginning of their adventure and the end of it. Um, so a lot can happen. Um, the game is very, very detailed. Um, there's a nice tutorial section here that explains the whole system. I won't go into too much depth here. I suggest that you, what I would suggest for anyone interested in playing this game, read a tutorial se session. Section. It's relatively simple. There's not a lot to explain. Each page is relatively straightforward, but it, it explains exactly what happens. Um, and it's it's just very nice. Um, and very. The thing I love about it is that it's all got context. It's very clearly set out, explained. Um, it is a beautiful help menu. Um, you have all kinds of tools, you have new battles, you can like make custom maps, open editor. Um, there's a whole host of stuff that you can do. They have their wiki page, discord page. It's This game is really so 
so polished and it's only getting better. But for first off, I think I shall dive into the game and sew it off to you. Because I personally love this game. Wild and Myth, I think, is an absolute... One of those absolute rare gems that comes along every once in a while. Um, and the amount of style and character that goes into it is beautiful. It has a very interesting art style, I will say. It reminds... Basically, their art style is very much um, a paper art style. Almost sort of like... Um, if you have, if you ever seen like cut out paper cut out um, puppet art or any kind of like um, comic book style of art, so, like when you see it in um, games where they sort of have animated cut cut out, um, it reminds me very much of the early days of D and D, um, not early days, but the um, earlier editions of D and D, where um, your tokens used to be cut out tokens where you used to fold the base and. That's how you had your um, your your dimensional your two D token. You basically had a character that you cut out, um, folded the base up of, and they would move around on the map. And this is very much it feels like that. It has a very classical D and D feel to it. Um, so we will dive in now. Um, there's a number like a number of campaigns still coming, as you can see. Monarchs of the Under Mountain, Ulna of the Moth. These are some of the facts. These are all facts and related missions. Um, now you have these: the Age of Ultrax, a free chapter story that is geared towards new players' fates off against the implacable Gorgon leader. The Enduring War, centuries-old war resurfaces, bringing with it questions of humanity, identity, and the price of ambition. A five-chapter story with with Mothagi, which are basically this universe's version of like constructs robots as the main threat um a relatively short campaign just three chapters promote one legacy here if you win only procedural events no overarching villain story which means that basically it's just you versus the world there's no like evil villain backstory same here um it's the same as basically enduring war but you have no overarching villain story and you've got heart of the forest this campaign will teach you how to make a campaign. It's not yet complete experience. Basically, you can make a campaign. You can make um, villains, monsters, campaigns. This world is very, very in-depth and only going to grow more so as they add more content. I know for a fact on their roadmap, they are planning to add at least two more. But judging from the size of this area down here, they are probably intending to continue to add more. I, I hope they do. Their writing is very, very good quality. Um, from a D and D um, perspective, it's it's really good D and D um, uh, pl um, plot writing. It keeps the players engaged or the player engaged. Um, I wish myself that I could make a campaign, but I don't know if I'm good enough program wise to do it also my drawing skills were abysmal unless I made tokens um, so I couldn't draw as nice as as beautiful the monsters that they have in here as um, but we will start off with the Age of Ultrex which is the beginner cap um, campaign the, ca the campaign is broken into three chapters each one will vary in length and the time between each chapter will vary in length depending on how the player behaves and acts in it and, and achieves goals but we will sell that when we get there, so let's start, shall we? First off, you can customise your difficulty. Now, you have a number of difficulties in the game. Um, focuses on story, on telling story with more control over the outcomes. Basically, let's go... We'll customise the difficulty, we'll go combat difficulty, we'll go... CS, I love the fact that their difficulties are broken up into authors, different levels of authors. So you've got CS Lewis, JK Rowling, J George R. R. Martin, and HP Lovecroft. For example, if you go to Martin's stuff. Combat difficulty mostly controls Okay, that's not what we want. We want to basically go to um, that world is brutal, combat is unforgiving, few survive unscathed. You can also go to here to have a breakdown. Combat difficulty mostly controls heroes' health, monsters' health, armor, and damage. High combat difficulty means heroes are more prone to getting killed in given situations. Overland campaign difficulty. Overland campaign mostly controls the pace of calamities, time pressure on the overland campaign map, and the frequency of infestations and incursions. It can end up having a, a big impact on combat difficulty too because of calamities. 
So, for the sake of demonstrating the campaign, we will go... We'll go rolling for combat difficulty, which is standard. And we'll go we'll go standard across the board for combat difficulty and, and overland campaign difficulty. Um, or do I want to solve... Actually, I might go C.S. Lewis for overland campaign difficulty, just to show you some of the mechanics of the campaign map. Because once the campaign gets rolling, um, we don't have a... The game, the game is very brutal. Uh, it's a it's a great game, um, but don't expect to um, don't expect to be able to win it. Even on the basic difficulty settings, don't expect to be able to win it without having to think what you're doing because this is not how the game works. The game is very much expecting you to play. Uh, you don't get any free handouts, even on the on the easiest of settings. You have additional mods. There's not a lot of mod. There's modifiers to give you um, change stuff like points, um, which adds to your score. Uh, this allows you to make villains. I haven't really done much of this to be honest, because it hasn't been completely finished yet, and my skills are lacking. But we're going to go with custom difficulty, which is. JK Rowling for combat and CS Lewis for overland difficulty. So let's start. Here are our three characters. Um, these are the beginning people in your party. Um, you always get a warrior, a hunter, and a mystic as your starting characters. Um, basically, these do you have different traits? So let's let's collect one to inspect. Yeah. So we have Edio Iron. A uh, compassionate intellectual. He's a farmer. He's 23 years old. He's got no abilities to speak of. His stats are eh, not too bad. He's the suggestion of this being hu like human suggests to me that maybe later on down the line they're planning to put other races in, which would be really cool. Make it um, have a very more D and D theme, um, which is that maybe like you get dwarves and elves and stuff will be added, which would be cool. Like the, the, to have some more of the D and D or fantasy based races brought in later on, which would be really awesome. Um, so you have your health, which is five health ticks. Um, you have your speed, which is how far you move. You can see, for example, you can actually lose legs. You can lose limbs, which will affect your abilities. Um, how much health he recovers per day. He recovers one tick every three to six days. Speed of injury heal. Healing happens at one quarter speed while traveling and half speed on a wilderness or infestile. And times two speed at town. So basically you want to heal in settlements. Healing happens slower the more injured you are. Inputs he's 25 but human. But plus 25 for human and plus four for upbringing. His retirement age is 45. When to stop adventuring? Once a hero reaches the retirement age, they adventure for one last chapter then before retiring. So, as I said, this game is this story is broken up into three chapters. So, for example, if he got to the second chapter, the end of the second chapter, and he was old enough to retire, you would be able to play him in the final chapter. Um, but if we we're in a long campaign, for example, a five-chapter campaign, he would retire halfway through the campaign. And as I as I have played this game, I have found out that in the long campaigns, you really have to nurture young talent because your your A team, the team of heroes that you have at the beginning of the campaign, more than likely will not be there at the end of it because they have got too old and they have retired. Unless certain things have come into effect to increase their retirement age. Um, he's got no armor. He's got no warding, which is basically resistance against magic attacks. His dodge chance is. 47. I think that's percent. I think this is a percentage. Um, I'm not totally sure. His block chance. Hit melee accuracy. Um, this would go down by enemies' dodge chance, for example. So, for example, if I was trying to hit myself, I believe it would be 101, and then basically, I think like 40, like it would basically reduce it by 47 by either block or by dodge. So. These things have an impact if you block or dodge this way to do it. You have stun resistance, you've got potency, pot power of magical attacks, bonus damage from extra attacks for physical attacks, and you've got charisma, how much favoured by others and by fate you are. Um, you can also see if you get older, the less charisma you have. Charisma allows you to interact with people, tenacity, grit, termination, and mental toughness. And then like you have personality here, 
you know, personality traits like boorish. I've read about this upbringing. These are basically um, things that influence his his compassionate um, intellectual characteristics. Um, so all these things, you can mess with it. As you can see, book is peacekeeper. Um, so if you want something to be higher up on the on the order, you can you can switch it around. So we could have a bookish peacekeeper. We could have a compassionate intellectual. This actually does have an impact. Um, has no relationships right now, but you could develop them. Like, for example, as I, I should say, your personality does have an impact. Um, your pers because uh, you can develop friendships, rivalries, hatreds, like nemeses, all this kind of things are developed on your personality. Relationships are same similar things. You can develop uh, love interest, enemies, friends. Um, the gear that he starts off with, he hasn't got any gear because we haven't started the game. His combat actions, his history. Aldo was found in the woods by by a monstrous being of bone and gears. Oddly, it didn't hurt the abandoned child, but saw him in the arms of the local midwife before disappearing it without explanation of signs. For years, he worked at a bookbinder for, for a printer in the West. His volumes probably lining cells in 100 homes and libraries. He's obsessed over his studies of medical reagents, gleaning from hides and haunt, haunts of magical creatures. He never misses a chance to gather first-hand data. And you can see all these all these things play into it. If you have a deeper understanding of the game, you can fiddle with this as you wish. For example, he is human. He is alive. Wondrous ver uh, versatility of human being capable of much. Um, this does suggest to me that somewhere down the line they are going to put more races in, which I think is pretty cool. Um, and these hooks you can see here. Um, they basically influence in-game story events. Right, so you can also customize, you can change the name, we could change the face if we wish to give him a different face. It's a bit subtle, I would admit, but um, you can change all kinds of things. You could go like this. You can see it's, at the moment, it's very limited not i say limited but it's there's not as much as there could be you can also import a lot of stuff for example we could change his hairstyle give him a beard we can make him completely shaven if he wants to go like that i think we will keep it with what it was which was this you can also change color you can change the size for example, he can be tall, he can be short. All that kind of jazz. It's it's very individual and in how you're done. So once we got all that done, we can just do that. Um, and you can see here, these are characters. We have Edo, Ferdina, Fendina, who is basically a compassionate leader. Uh, cowardly peacemaker who is cool. I might just change that name. Dana, Diana, Diana. Yeah, it's good. Diana, snarky greed wagon. Yeah, not too bad. Um, so these are our starting characters, um, and our, our future heroes to be, hopefully. And they all have their different stats and personalities. Um, and we'll still start their little adventure and see how it develops. And here we are, folks. Welcome to Wilder Myth and the first tale of our adventure. This book, this there's room in it for another story. It's cold. I'm stuck here. And the book is called Wilder Myth. Don't we all wish for our own legend? Right, then this must be the beginning. Here in our yondering country, something in the woods is very is very strange. 
perturbed only by the ache in his weary legs, a young man named Edo took the second road to the town of Climbering Fall. Everyone's life is their own private legend, he considers. The great ones get remembered. I wonder if that's what I want. So the tale of Edo Iron is a dare is is a diary of dulls and dust and drudgery, but there's still so much to learn. Who knows where I'll end up? You can see what I meant by like, like the picture book art style. It is very much like reading a storybook. All right, no more useless thoughts. Morning gets late, and I still have to drag Fadina, Fadina out of her door. I'm sure she's got some grand plan to seek glory somewhere. We'll have to talk. Uh, we'll have to talk her down. Smoke. Smoke! He cries. And rushes home. One thing I will say is that their body positions could be slightly better. Um, they tend to stand in slightly unrealistic ways, but I suppose it's because of the cut book out art style. Right. Here are the choices. So we could go. Watch me, watch me worry, and she's fine, which will make develop a rivalry. Um, Fadina spends t too much time with ferns and fire, friendship. Or we could even try romance. I can't leave her alone. Um, since we are both compassionate, uh, I've, I've never gone the romance route. I've normally done the friendship. Let's go the romance route and see what happens. Fadina, don't breathe the smoke, I'm coming. Does he know what to do? Right, this is the battle map, folks. And this is our goals, which is put out fires. Right, so we need to go here. Basically, um, each person has two turn actions, which are the little diamonds here. Think of them at action points. So as you can see here, it will take us one action to get to here, and our character will hop over. And then you right click on a tile. And for example, we can do extinguish. Well, you can press it down here, which shows we can do, for example, we can extinguish flames, which is what we're going to just extinguish this flame here, which will put that fire out. And then because there's no one else in the turn order, we'll hop over to here and we'll extinguish this flame. With that completed, we need to get to this door and open it. Now, this will take us all of our actions to get up to here. I like this motion you, you hop. It reminds me of like how you move tokens on a mat on a board. And um, it takes no action to open the door. You fling it open. Home is still sta home standing. It's all right. Breathe, Edo. Fadina, are you hurt? Is there a reason the door is locked? Edo? Could he be here? Could it, could it be he coming? Could it, sorry, Edo. Could it be he came because perfect timing? It's just like I was always saying, Edo. This is perfect, he says. No time now. These things came. I not saw what they were. Caused chaos. This one, there's one behind the house. This one behind the house won't leave. Grab something and hit it. So you cut see uh, instructs. Garu the sound goes up from behind the house and some kind of monster is lurking waiting for us. Nato sudders, as does Fadina. Fandina. You know what? Fork them. Fork them. Um if you can if you can dig with it, you can hit with it, or you can fight with it. This is for cooking. Why'd I grab this? Actually, to be honest, if you smack someone with a cast iron skillet, which is what that looks like. It looks like like a frying pan, cast iron frying pan. They will not be getting back up. Those things are heavy and high duty. Now, what do we want to take? We can take a pitchfork. So basically a two-handed weapon, a one-handed weapon, or a frying pan. Um, since we're inside a house... I doubt we would have access to a pick. Hmm. Let's take a pitchfork. It's always like pole arms or spear weapons are always fantastic for keeping anything at distance in any game. So, 
I'm not going to say anything. No, obviously not. Just let let just let's not die, okay? Be ready before you open that door. So we're fighting a row. Who's thrown slobly around beneath it? It runs staggeringly, staggering, bellowing its agony. So it's some kind of corrupted deer by the looks of it. Kill the beast. Right. So. For Dina, who's some, who is a hunter with a ranged attack. I will say that a patch came out recently which has slightly nullified um, range units. Um, by the way, when you stand next to a, an allied unit, you get walling. Walling for Dina in, is in this defense formation with an ally would take reduced damage from attacks, which means that once you partner up with people, it's you can take you have higher resistances, which is nice. Um, we can't do anything, so we are going to wait our turn. Okay, first of all, let's open the door. And we will hop outside and see what we're facing. It takes us one action to get to here. There we go. There's the monster. Um, we can't attack it yet. So let's get her up to get in a wall guard system behind our character. Can we... It's out of range as well. As you can hover over here, you can see the red tiles. You can zoom out with the mice button. I like keeping a nice close-in look to it. I do wish, though, that the red was slightly brighter. I think we can we can tweak it in um, the UI menu setting. But let's wait for now. Right, it's going to come down here. She's got an 86% chance to hit it. So if we zoom in on this character, and a 15% chance to stun. So let's try that. That will take an action to do. Well, it actually, it took all our actions. Oh, I forgot. Yeah, if you want to attack, it uses your, your remaining action pool, unless you have multi-attack. So let's stay here. He is armed with a pike. You can also check out your character's gear in combat by pressing the C, pressing the C button and pressing here. He's got a pitchfork. Which is a wooden sartre affixed with an iron fork for shoveling hay. It's effective and traditional. Melee strike. Additional attacks nearby foe with a pitchfork. I think they fixed this because what used to happen was that you used to have an ability called guard as soon as you picked up a pole arm, which allowed you to basically take a defensive stance and attack one opponent that came past. I think they may have fixed that. So he's going to hit me for two damage, which is not great. Um, I am going to stab him, though. He dodged. That's not great. So, we're going to shoot him. He blocked it. That's really not good. Ooh, I'm taking a ton of damage here. Um, really not good. As always, my um, luck is terrible in games. He took a real pounding, which is not great. He did heal up, though, which is not too bad. Because he leveled up. When you level up, you heal a degree of your damage done to your health. Um, warriors like Edo are built hardy, enduring, with a nature, natural aptitude for combat. They develop powerful techniques for close combat. So, once you level up, you get a perk. So we could call have Wolf Call. After a successful kill, Ado's allies gain two plus two speed for this and their fellow turns. We could get vigilance. Um, passive, Edo heightened, sense allowing to perform infinite reaction strikes per turn. See, this is the ability I thought you could get, which is Guardian. Um, if Aiden enters turn by moving, he automatically enters Guardian. Which is basically, these two in combination together are very powerful. Which is heightened, sense allowing to perform infinite reaction strikes per turn. Um... I might go Paladin, because it's useful. Um, hunters like Fadina thrive in the world, surviving through stealth and peerless archery. They master their surroundings and bring down large quarry. Fadina counters all range attacks against her, which is very nice. Fadina moves faster and can move through scenery, which is useful. Fox light to flight. Fadina has plus one speed, once per combat has a swift action, activate to gain 50 percent oh, 50 more 50 oh, sorry plus 50 dodge for this and the enemy and the enemy's turn 
Um, but basically, if you activate it, it disables it. You get passive and active abilities. Some which you have to trigger, and some which are triggered automatically or just in the background. I will take Traveler because it means you can move and um, can move faster and move through scenery. But Archery is very good. Counters all the range attack against. I might pick up Archery actually. Uh, we picked up a item, um, which is a Wolf Heart Ring, which is a health item. I may equip it to him. As you can see, it appears on his finger. All equipment and items that you pick up appear on your characters, which is very nice. Um, so nothing you ever pick up in the game is never rep is ever not represented. Uh, you're a natural Edo. You and I could, we, we make a good team is all. Dana could be in trouble. Sorry, the timing's bad, but come on, let's keep our word. Now, up to that shadowy ruin? What about my home? says Fadina. The fire is out, the thing is dead. The other townsfolk will do what needs to be do uh, needs doing. And I am wondering. Now that you mention it, these tracks do lead that way. Why was Dana so uh, to, why was Diana so intent on meeting us there? But old Black Tower, I would have I wouldn't forgive myself if she's if she's there alone in dire need. Oh Diana, chasing one of her glimmers in the dark. Were you lured? Were you lured to a waiting jaw? So you can choose it here. So, for example, we could have a rival with Diana. If it's madness, come on, Diana. Diana's all right. She is. Or you could do like the romance option. Let's just go with friendship. Come on, Diana. You and Diana are good friends. Should we be worried? About Diana, says Fadina. I don't think so. Weird things tend to happen around her, but she's probably up there now. Figuring things out, they say, as the monsters start to approach. Right. In order to find sites in the wilderness, heroes must scout the land, which takes time. Click on the unscattered tile to sow scouting actions. Right, so this is basically how the game works, which is that... Yeah, it's going to take us time. He's in town at the moment, healing up. Um, it's going to take him a little bit of time to do it, though. He's stationary. Yeah. Um, so here's how this map works, which is that we have a world map. Not a lot of it's viewable at the moment. Um, there's also a lot of impassable gray terrain. Grand Moss Ridge. Agonmunt. Also, I still say these maps are procedurally generated because the last time I played, we did not start on a location like this. Um, you also get resources here as well, which you use for crafting. Um, we have our legacy points, which we can use for various bits and pieces. We have the calamities which are the different factions in the world. And each faction has cards. Um, as you can see, um, there are currently four factions in the game. Um, there is a fifth one going to be added. I hope they add another one. Personally, I hope they add a human faction, because as much as I like fighting monsters, which are what these factions are, it would be really nice to have, like... Because as, as the old saying goes, there's never, there's no worse... There's no worse creature in existence than man, if you believe the Twilight Zone. Um, so it'd be nice to have like a bandit faction or some kind of like cultist faction or like evil empire. Um, that's a human even evil empire. Would be really nice. Uh, here you can see which cards basically, because each monster faction has a deck of cards that they can bring to a battle. Um, and the longer campaign goes on, the more cards they can get. So, for example, these are some of the ones we have come to contact before with. I won't sew those off now. We'll hide them for a moment. You have... There is no infested tiles, which are where monsters basically spawn out of. And there is zero days until the next Calamity card, which is that as time ticks on, um, Calamities basically build up. And you can counteract them with your legacy points, or you let them happen. And they will basically affect... Um, they will affect pretty much the world around you by adding bonuses to existing monster cards, adding new cards to the monster's deck. Um, that happens anyway. Um, every time you complete a tile, 
uh, a new like a new feature added to the monster's decks, depending on what faction that you're fighting. So um, it's never an easy campaign. But what I'm going to do right now is that we have done our first fight. We are currently in clamber for, clambering for, um, with Aiden needing to basically Ado, sorry Ado, Adio, Ado. I can never pronounce names well. I wonder if we can change it here. Can we change his name? Nope. No, we can still can. Yeah. Let's turn, just change it to something a bit easier for me to say so I don't look like a fool. Uh, John Iron. Let's go John Iron. So here we go, John Iron. Um, with John Iron who's wounded from his being mauled by some kind of mutated deer beast. And um, for Dina. So we're going to put a cut in here, folks. This has been Wild Myth. The episodes are going to be about 40 minutes long. Um, purely due to the fact that this, like, this is not a, going to be a short... If I do it like 20 minute episodes, we'll be here all day. Because this takes a while to go through. Um, I've run two campaigns. A long one and a short one. And it took me 12 hours to get through both of those. So you can imagine how long a single campaign takes. It takes about three to four hours, and I want to sew as much as possible off about this game. So we're gonna do a good like thirty to forty minute videos for each chap for each episode. Um, but as for the time being, this is Wild Myth. I suggest you look it up on Steam. The link to the game is in the description below, as always. Um, if you have liked it, please press the like button. If you wish to subscribe, please press the subscription button. If you wish to have a character named after you in the game, um, leave a comment in the comment section below, and I shall change one of the characters' names. And um, let me know what you think of the game. I personally think it's a really good game. Um, but that's going to be all for now, folks. See you next time. Goodbye.